Hello, welcome back to How to RPG. Well, this is a work day. This is the Game Master Preparation Day. This is where we build something. But before that, I'm going to be doing a presentation. Before you, you see some uh, Dungeon Master Guides or Game Master Guides for Pathfinder 1st Edition, 2nd Ed Edition, 4E. Yes, I do have the 5E one here as well. And the 1E and the 2nd Ed Edition are floating around here somewhere, uh, which I will uh, certainly... <clears throat> I feel like I've got most of that in my head already, so I'm, I'm all, I should be all right. Okay, so I'm going to put up a poll, ask you a question. Feel free to take part in that poll. How's it going? Prepare, cook, and survive. Grab some food, some drink. Make sure you're comfortable. Grab your pen. Turn on your brains, uh, because um, after I do my standard presentation, we'll be going straight into uh, building wilderness locations, okay? That's what this is all supposed to be about. This is what this live stream is supposed to be covering, so that's what we're going to do. All right, <clears throat> I started late. Um, I'm going to apologize. I am <laughs> needing a holiday. All right, let's go. Where is it? No, that's not the right one. That's the one I want. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> dear. Uh. Hi, and welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role playing games. Now today, it is about Game Master Preparation. That's right, Game Master Preparation. All the things you need to do. This is Lesson 4, Creating Locations. Today, specifically, I'm going to focus in on Wilderness Locations. We've been doing this before, I'm going to keep doing this, but before that, there are a few things I need to cover. So let's do that first, okay? Right, the overview. Inspiration for creating locations. I'm going to cover that. How to create your locations location details and information, the specific location layout, and we're not going to be covering a specific location layout today because the location layout for today is wilderness locations. So that's extremely broad, so there's a lot to cover. And then I'll be doing some miscellaneous recommendations for those of you who are new to this and would like some help. Okay, objectives. Explain how to build your adventure locations for your role-playing game. Demonstrate the process as well and get you some practice. So I'm going to get you to actually interact with me in the chat. So please make sure you are ready. All right, let's go straight into the topic. Inspiration for creating locations. Where do you get your inspiration from? I find myself that real world architecture and landmarks are really good. Find an image of a historical building, a structure or an area, and you transport that into your role playing game. Books, movies offer many landscapes and places that are exotic, so you can port them into your game as well. Also video games that have a, a role playing game experience often uh, have dynamic environments that you can explore, so you can port those in as well. Uh, pictures, paintings, landscape, artwork done in oil, acrylic or watercolour, all can be used for creating your locations. Pre-made role-playing games usually have published adventures, so you can use the locations that they have created, either the artwork or the maps, and port them over to your game. Uh, Google Search, Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt, all have images of locations that you can utilise in your game to make it more interesting and, uh, and bring life to your adventure. How do you actually create a location? Right, let's break it down really easy for you. Make it simple. Use real world architecture. I said it before, use real world architecture. Why? Because it makes sense. You can use a real plan, a, a layout for a building or a ruin, the deck plan for a ship, uh, floor plans for buildings and ruins. There's lots of them out there. So go and use the ones that are provided. Check out Sly Flourish's fantastic locations. Now he has some preparation methods, but if you don't want to have to read all of that, and it's not that long, break it down to these key ideas. Make it old, make it large, give it a unique feature or features, give it a function, and give it an interesting name. What is an interesting name? Well, you could call it the White Mountains, or you could call it the Howling Banshee Mountains. Now you've just added something else to it. Also, probably a good idea to include a banshee with your mountain. Focus on making the location as reusable as a set piece as possible. This is really helpful for the future when you're doing your preparation because many locations tend to repeat. They wind up being reused by a game master, such as a village, a town, cities, castles, 
can be a bit tricky because there's so many different types of castles. Strongholds, tombs, usually built the same way. Pyramids, mazes. Now, mazes will of course be very different, but that's beside the point because you can access so many different mazes and uh, you just need to have a book of them. You can go and buy a little activity book and you're away. Temples, shrines, a mine has a, the same structure, a cave location, easy to do. Uh, monster lairs will often follow a cave location um, structure anyway, but monster lairs are usually built a particular way. Death tra trap dungeons will kind of suffer the same thing as the maze. They will be different and, and, and varied, but they're always set up to drive them towards the danger. And then of course you have your treasure vault and a sailing ship. Very common. A sailing ship is probably going to have the same uh, deck plan as any other um, sailing ship. So you can probably reuse that a lot. Now, if you're looking for resources for this, the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters is all about locations. It just has maps, details on it, what could happen there, really useful. The Pathfinder role-playing game has a Game Mastery Guide. This is the first dead edition one, and on page 178 to 181, there is a whole bunch of information on different locations and building them. You've also got something like Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters. This is only going to apply if you're running puzzles. But if you are running puzzles, page um, 76 to, now is it 76? Yes, that's right. There's some encounter sections there. Uh, and it's 76 to 79. I find this quite useful because it gives you a whole lot of different locations. There are room or dungeon locations rather than wilderness locations, but still really useful. It's like a hundred different items available to you. The Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons and Dragons 5e has useful information on page 292 to 295, and you'll find that most Dungeon Master Guides do have additional information, whatever version you're playing with, uh, on locations. And sure, the location is interactive for your characters, okay? Whatever you do, make sure that they're able to actually interact with that location. Because it's the tool for one of the three pillars of play, and that is exploration. So give them something to interact with. Draw a picture with digital tools, uh, pencil, paper, like all those things can be really useful. Um, change what you need, okay, to fit your adventure, and then label that map or location. Really what you're doing is you're drawing a map. At some point, there's going to be a map. It might be a really simple map. It might be as simple as there's one location and all I'm doing is drawing the contours of a mountain and a little ledge and that's it. So that's the, the basics for um, getting your location sorted out. But we're not finished. There are a few more things that we need to discuss. That is the location details and information. What do these look like? Well, um, some questions need to be asked. So who created your location? If it was created at all, who created it? And if you want some ideas, go to the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e, page 100, uh, has some ideas for creating your own um, locations. What's the purpose of your location? Okay, answer that question. Now you'll find almost every single guide out there has something like this. The purpose of a location is vital. What is the history of the location? Why is the location important? These are the questions you answer, okay? And if you're looking for information on that, the DMG for 5e on page 101 will have information there on it. Okay, who inhabits your location? The general population of the location that you have. And I would, I'm gonna refer you to the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder First Edition. You'll, pay, you'll find a whole lot of information there on page 182 to 183. And the DMG for 5e, page 101 to 102, has a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, position hazards and obstacles in the location. This is your traps, your puzzles, natural hazards. And again, I will refer you back to Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters. Why? Because Wally is one of my buddies, honestly. That's that's true. That's 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 the deal. But he's also one of the best people for creating puzzles that I have ever seen, and also traps, because he isn't a sadist. <laughs> well, well, Wally's a nice guy. Okay, so you'll find his um, Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters very useful for the puzzle side, and his YouTube channel Wally DM excellent for puzzles and traps in terms of the ideas he can present you. And a lot of his stuff goes onto his website. Uh, 
Also, um, the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e, you'll find page 102 to 105 is really useful, and then pages 296 to 298 quite useful as well. I would say not nearly as useful as what you can get off Wally DM's um, YouTube channel or his website or his book. Okay, what about dressing the location, particularly if it's indoors rather than outdoors? Uh, dressing would be objects, furniture, adding features to the location, um, which with aspects that you can interact with or manipulate in some way. So what we want to do is we want to again focus down on the exploration aspect. Okay, so the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder First Ed Edition has got uh, page 181, has got a bunch of ideas around here in terms of the dressing of it up. And the DMG for 5e, page uh, 280, um, 98 and to 301, has actually got a really good set of tables for this, which has been very much ported from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So if you've got First Ed Edition, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Dungeon Master Guide, you'll probably find you have all that you need there. Now, I would like to say that the same thing applies to second ed edition, but it's not quite as good, <laughs> which is strange because it's a high quality book. Okay, so that's everything that I think you generally need to know with regard to creating your own locations. But there are some miscellaneous recommendations I always like to give out, and here they are for you today. You don't have to make, um, be good at drawing a location map. Because you're not selling it. If you were selling it, you would have to be good at that. But you're not. You're making it for you, you and your group. So don't worry about that. It's not necessary to use or learn uh, any kind of map drawing software. Because there is an alternative method. The alternative method is a pencil, paper or a pen and a rubber or eraser. The rubber, I mean, is the thing on the end of the pencil, people. Okay? I'm in New Zealand. <coughs> so... That's, that's my suggestion to you, is if just draw it. Just draw it out. That's all you've got to do. It's not that hard. Now, there are also so many different maps that have been made for fantasy locations that are available. You can steal them, borrow them, um, appropriate them, whatever you're going to do. Use the stuff that's out there. And there's so many different websites that allow you to actually access their stuff. And I could list off a truckload of them. But I'm going to say, first off, you probably want to go and pay a, uh, a visit to Dyson Logos. Dyson Logos provides a lot of free maps, and so go check out that. Also, fantasticmaps.com is quite useful as well. Uh, you'll find you can make up randomly generated maps for stuff using Donjon, which is D-O-N-J-O-N, -O quite useful as well. All right. I'm hoping that that was useful to you in some way, and if it was, fantastic, I'm glad to hear it. If it wasn't enough, you'll tell me what else you need to know, and so I can work on it for the future. Uh, I want to thank my patrons, because they support me, so I can keep running this program. This program is uploaded to my Patreon, so you can download it with all of the assets and the links. Okay, uh, if you were just watching, hey, thank you, I hope it was useful, and uh, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. <clears throat> oh man okay i got through it i got through it let's get some uh let's go to chat and then let's get get uh, busy and do some work eh uh let's see um for those of you who are wondering um yes we are definitely going to be working on uh wilderness locations i had a bunch of different slides actually that i was uh preparing and i was like yeah mm, 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 we can save that for later Anyway, uh, I already said hi to Prepare, Cook and Survive. How's it going, Shiner81? And Dungeons and Chronics is here as well. Thank you for arriving. Thank you for being here. You can help me along with this journey. So let's have a look at our poll. We've got nine votes so far. Uh, I'll come back to this. Do you have trouble building wilderness locations for your adventure? Sometimes, so 56%. So the vast majority of people are putting in sometimes. Fair enough. You know, the key thing to a location, that particularly a wilderness location... I think is the name. It, that's always the troublesome part. And the easiest part um, way of dealing with a location and, uh, and naming it, since that is the hardest bit to do, you might say it's drawing it, but actually it's not because you've got lots of things you can copy from. The hardest thing is naming it. So the easiest way to deal with that is you take a, a type of uh, wilderness location. 
So if it's a mountain, as I said, the Howling Banshee Mountains, or you might be looking at something like um, a, a marsh, and so you, you call it the, the, the Reeking Marsh. You give it something else to describe it, so that there's something tied to it that's part of the mystery, or part of the threat, or just makes it a little bit more interesting than it was before. Does, does that make sense? Almost tempted to buy as many as I can of the references you listed. Don't buy all of them. It really, Charles, you need to tell me. Charles is also a patron, by the way. Hello, Charles. Uh, don't buy everything. My, my suggestion to you is stick with me, Charles. You're going to find most of the resources you need will get bet, be, be uh, built on this channel. And I will put them up onto Patreon. Okay? That, that would be my... Uh, how's it going, Warlord of Art? How are you? <clears throat> so what I would say to you is, rather than going and buying a lot of these resources, which I'm sure you would find useful, you, you would be much more immediate, absolutely. Um, my honest belief is that the this book is better than most in general, but it still doesn't do quite as much as I would like. There are aspects to a lot of them that really I like. So we're going to build all the tools, Charles, and everybody else here. So you can expect to find... 100 of this and 100 of that and not only that it's not good enough to just give people a tag name we actually need to give them a bit more descriptive information one of the things for example yesterday that um, I realized after my brain started to function properly because I was so tired uh, is that okay we've we've decided that we need certain locations within our village for example our town or a village so we're going to have a saloon or an inn or a uh, motel or a, um, what do you call it, a general store. Fine. So we got the names of those, but we need to know what's in those locations. So we actually need a description. And the description is probably not going to be box text. What it needs to be is, what do you actually find in a location like that? So if we go into a blacksmith, what do we find? We find a forge, we find billows, we find hammers, tongs, um, chisels, uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a mandrel? Mandol, mandol? Oh god, I can't remember it. But you, you want all the information about what's actually in that location as well. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with wilderness locations today. Is We're going to have a tag name, and then what is it as a descriptor, and that'll make it easier for you to pull it all together. Um, if you're dealing with puzzles though, people, uh, seriously, Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters is one of the best ones I've ever seen around. Yeah, I'm doing good. Like, let's. Uh, well, I've been talking long enough. Let's um, open my door, throw off the hat, and get this uh, the sucker moving because um, we just don't have that much time to work on all of this, and with limited time, since we won't be able to come back to this for another what uh, two months roughly, it'd be good if we could actually get this done. Which I, I don't expect to. I, I expect it'll be a lot of work. But we'll certainly get as much as we can done. Now I am aware that the print is really, really small people. So don't don't fret. I'm going to expand it. But I need to shuffle things around. Because I realised we had so many different things here from last time. That uh, honestly I, there's no way I can possibly keep up with you. Uh, as you present ideas to me. And make sure I haven't repeated it already. So I'm going to have to do some adjusting. I'm going to have to shuffle things around a little bit. So let me just make sure that I've got this all ready. So as you can see, I've, we've already started. Um, and I just need to pull this up. Let's get rid of some of these. No, I don't want you. Don't want you. Go away. Go away. Go away. Thank you. Oh, get rid of that. Press this button here. <laughs> he says... <laughs> and people are waiting <laughs> for you to just get on with it. <laughs> bear with me, people. Bear with me. It'll, it'll happen. All right. Here we go. Now, what you see here before you looks really basic and like, well, I could do that myself. What I've discovered is you could sit down and do it yourself, but it would take you forever <laughs> because it's taken us at least two hours just to get that much done. Well, Let's, let's say an hour and 40 minutes or an hour and a half, okay? So rather than going through the rigmarole, the idea of the Game Master preparation is for me to do the work for you <laughs> so that you can just go to Patreon, pay a dollar a month, and download whatever the tools are that we've been built. 
that's the whole point behind all of this. Right, let me just open my door because I am sweltering. <clears throat> okay. Okay, right, let's have a look here. Um, I believe I'm almost ready to get this going. Okay, ah, bit of water. A lozenger. <clears throat> Ask you a question, probably a good idea. Let's do that question now. Hashtag. Hashtag, give me that. Here you go. Um, what are some wilderness locations? Now I may already have them. So what we're going to do, we're going to try to try to give me the idea as a tag name, tag name and short description. Description. Okay, there we go. It's in. <clears throat> right, let's have a look. I was trying to order this yesterday, and I could not get into my document, so I had to and do something else. Um, I have shuffled a few things around already, but not everything. H. Let's get H out of there. H should not be there. It's a hill. <clears throat> um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, 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 H, I. Let's put that there. So we, so the, just the, just hill is not enough. We have to do a bit more than that. So don't think that I'm going to leave it like that. What I want this to do and be is like a um, a breakdown, a really quick breakdown that you can use to describe the location so that you can repurpose it constantly. Cut. Hot pulls. <clears throat> H, uh, it'll be hot there. Paste. And, right, so, no, I'm going to leave that, that, that threw me out completely. Sinkhole. Uh, cut S S I sync. I think that goes here. Something like that. Sync. Yeah, okay, so my S's aren't all in alphabetical order. But we will <coughs> put them all together so that they are not spread out because this is spaces I'm not too worried about right now, I guess. Um, next. Volcano rock R rock pulls. Cut. So the idea behind this is that you take a simple <clears throat> descriptor of a wilderness location and then you're going to add um, a descriptor to it. As I said, it might be referring to a monster or another creature, something like that. <clears throat> and that's where you get your, um, your variation. Okay. Um, ST UV. TUV cut paste I see some people have um, typed some stuff into chat I have not missed you I, I can see it STUV and that can go there no too big a space let's get these all out of the way Uh, waterfall volcano, which we will deal with in a second. Cut, paste it here. Uh, that's M for mud pulls. That shouldn't be there. It's cut mud pulls M. Mud mud pulls. There we go. P paste. Okay, dungeons and chronics. Blackthorn or cursed part of a forest. Blackthorn is black as. Is a, is a blackthorn a particular thing? Because we do have forest, and the, and cursed forest would be, I mean, cursed would be the descriptor, and then forest would be something we already have. Is blackthorn, or I think this is what, uh, blackthorn, a cursed part of the forest? 
or is it supposed to be Blackthorn Forest? Okay, I'm a little bit unsure what to do with that, so I'm going to just put this in here for now. We'll come back to that. Black, Blackthorn. Okay. And the next one that somebody has written in here, what is this? Uh, prepare, cook and survive. You have Oasis, a fertile water location in a desert arid environment. So we actually have Oasis, for those of you who are wondering. Um, Oasis, what did we put in here? There we go. A watering hole with a shady palm tree in the middle of a desert. So, um, swamp of sorrows and misery. <laughs> So we, we, I'm pretty sure we have um, swamp in here. I think you'll find that we do have swamp listed down. So I put down for that dead trees with black trunks, rotting vegetation, scummy water, uh, quicksand, curling mist, moss hanging from the trees. So people wanted me to add a lot of stuff in there. So I did. We, we've got a whole bunch of stuff there. A pass. Uh, so I had a, a hard think about this too. You know how I was saying before we, um, we did, last time we did this that we were repeating a lot of things? Uh, I also realized that that was going to happen to get to 100, but also too that it didn't matter because we just need to know what the descriptor or tag name is, what it is, 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 is it, what is it as an as a actual part of your environment. That's, that's it. So pass... We don't have pass, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Charles. I got it down. Um, a narrow villi, a villi, uh, a valley amongst high rising mountains. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. You've already got the you've got the descriptor there as well. Well done. All right, let's just pull it straight out of the chat then. Um, here. And... I'm going to close these because this isn't going to help me. Pass. Paste. That didn't work. Let's try that again. Formatting gone. Okay. All right. Uh, now, what else did somebody said? Somebody had said something about a miss. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look it up. Um, Mass. Masma? What is a masma? I'll be looking that one up, I guess. What do you got here? Prepare, cook, and survive. Uh, wreckage. Um, Oasis. Prepare, cook, and survive. I'm going to probably port some of your ideas into the original o Oasis. Wreckage. An abandoned vehicle could contain supplies, parts. Could even be... Yeah. So, I think... What I want you to think is, we're not putting a castle or a town or a city or a house in our wilderness. What we're doing is we're just de dealing with wilderness things. So, for example, Charles has written down bog and pass. And I don't believe we have bog and we didn't have pass. But those are the things we wanted to work on. I think that's what we focus on if we can. So, let me just see. Uh, before I lose it, let me grab bog. And then I'm going to go back to Oasis, don't I? Um, so bog, B, 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 B. This is the other thing that I hadn't done, which I probably should have done, which is to put everything into alphabetical order. <laughs> because when we make these 100 tables, it just takes forever, right? So um, best if I do that. So thank you very much, um, Charles. Nice job. Bog. Now a bog is very similar to a swamp or a marsh or a more, I am aware. Yeah. Well, a structure that allows water to flow. So, so what we've put down is we've put fresh. Um, um, we've put down spring. I think it was spring, rather than well, because it's a, a man-made structure. It's not wilderness as such. This is. We've got a sinkhole. Okay. There's there's a good example. Um, did I have spring? I had something like spring. Was it was it hot springs? I think it was hot springs. Yeah, hot springs. We've got hot springs. So spring. So we're going to put down spring instead of your your um, your well. And the reason we're putting in spring is that spring is is where water comes out of, right? So we're really we're, we're creating a a naturally forming uh, water source. Okay, so spring. S S S. This is not an order as it is. So I put it there.
spring we'll come back to spring okay good one uh now oasis before i get lost village ruins shiner 81 forget about the village ruins people i want you just to focus down on naturally forming wilderness stuff naturally forming because we can put structures in there to out to the cows go home but let's just deal with the wilderness stuff for now I know, I feel like you guys want to go off on that tangent today. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can feel the pressure. But let's try not to if we can help it. Thermal vents. Under T. Cut. T, uh, T, 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 T. Thermal. Thermal. It's probably about there. Tundra. I've got to do all these. A lot of filling in for me to do. Okay, paste. Okay, good. Alright, Oasis. Let's get back to Oasis before I get sidetracked too much. Oasis. Um, Oasis, and you've got here fertile. Okay, a watering hole with fertile. land and shady palm trees in the middle of a de of a desert okay all right we got it down um now let's keep putting these things to order no leave that away alone yeah uh, this one here which i did you guys had to struggle last time to explain it to me but i got it now m um, m e there we go put it here all right that's that one um scree this here this i wasn't expecting this one scree cut back scree s s s where are we should be going about there paste uh geyser field uh cut g G geyser 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 no come on there we go that's the one I want geyser field okay now I know what you're thinking Fred but we put structures in the wilderness and I I, I get it <laughs> but that 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 that's a, another hundred things in itself so let's let's leave that for another day let's just concentrate on the different wilderness bits and pieces tundra uh, cut I oh, know, was it supposed to stay there? It is in the right place. Paste. It is in the right place. Okay, so I just grabbed it for the sake of doing nothing. <laughs> um, wet, wet, back. Okay, so let's get rid of these spaces. So we know what we're working with. I'm going to push these down for now. Fill in all of the spaces and gaps that we had. We don't need to have anymore. And we've got a better idea of what we're working with. And then I've got to start filling in the uh, the details on these, don't I? Okay. Cool. Did I just do something wrong? What did I do? No, I didn't. Uh, just let me fill it, um, get rid of all these spaces and then we'll uh, I'll check chat, chat again. Now, there we go. Oh, come on. Uh, that's that one. That's that one. Okay. No, don't do that. Okay. Yep. Okay, so what do we actually, what did we wind up with in the end? We have 71 with a whole lot that I need to fill in. Okay, what have we got here? Tabletop rock formation, where two rocks hold up a third, making a, a cave below. Is it, is that a table, is it called a tabletop cave location? Interesting. I've never heard of it before. It's a new one on me. Oh, I suppose what I should also do is I should be promoting this giveaway I'm, I'm assuming most of you who have already joined the giveaway 
And if you haven't joined the Call of Cthulhu Big Metal Dice giveaway, please do. Because I don't often do them and they may not come up again. You, this may be the only one I ever roll, run in the future. Who, who knows? This, this, this might be the last one. Because um, <laughs> I don't usually do them at all. Anyway, let's go there. Back to workstation. Where are you? Okay, cool. Um, well, let me just look it up. Tabletop rock formation. Rock formation. Define. Table rock for my. Oh, I see. Tabletop rock formation define. A mushroom rock. What is the name for a table rock formation? Is that what we're talking about here? It is composed of sandstone and is the largest freestanding table rock formation, also called a mushroom rock, in the United States, east of the Mississippi River. Shiner. Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not doing carnivorous plants at this present time. We're just doing the land. Just doing the wilderness land um, locations for now. Just the wilderness locations. I'm kind of interested by interested by this. So this. So it's called a mushroom rock. Is an is that the formal name? Is it called a table rock formation? Oh, it, it's the flat top mountain. It's the We've already got that one. We've just got a different name for it. That's what it is, correct? That's what you're referring to? No, maybe that's not what you're referring to. There's something else. So two rocks either side, one on top, forming a cave. And is it its official name? Okay, the coast of sandstone it is the largest freestanding ta um, table rock formation. Also known as mushroom. It's called... mm. I'm a little bit unsure of what to do, do with that. Is that what you normally call it? Can we go here for images and see what we got? No, that's not what you mean, eh? Is this is this what you mean here? Is that kind of what you're talking about? Um, rock formation. It's just rock formation. Okay. What we can do here is we can do rock formation, can't we? We've got rock pulls. We can have rock formation. I'll try to Google it, the official name. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, for now, I'm going to put in here rock formation, and you let me know if that works. Rock formation. I'm not familiar with it because... I'm, I'm not in the United States, so it's a bit more difficult for me to understand. Uh, okay. Starting at the beginning. Archipelago. Now, I put down here a chain of small islands, but... Copy. Let's get the official definition. And then see if we have to describe anything. And we don't want images, but we can see pictures. That's fine. Uh, archipelago. An extensive group of islands. Okay, so it, they call it an extensive group of islands. I've got here. And. X. Extensive chain of small islands. Um. A stretch of sea of water having many islands. Let's have a look here. Archipelago is an area that contains a chain or group of islands scattered in lakes, rivers, or the ocean. West of British, British, British Columbia, um, Canada, south of. Okay, all right. So, 
I'm going to leave in small islands. I think that's got it. Got it. We've got that there. Nice and easy. Okay. Beach. We've got the beach down. Um, we might just get rid of some of this. Sam Dunes. Tussock. Tussock grass. Doesn't like that. It was much happier when it was a capital. Fine, tussock grass it is. Low shrubs, shells, trees. Um, Metavillion. Why did I have that down there? There'll be a reason, I'm sure. Palm trees. Uh, do you know, we don't have a lot of palm trees in New Zealand, so it's, it's a new one on me. <laughs> Unless we have them imported. So, a bog, a wide open space of watery moss and, and occasional pine trees. Let's see if Bob is bog. Is bog actually, is that the definition we get? Bog. Bog, me bog, bog. All right. A habitat tree, a large tree with a hollow trunk housed, housing wild animals or plants. So that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like the idea a lot. We're coming to that. A fairy circle, a circle of mushrooms with a spiritual or magical connection. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting it, guys. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Those Both those eyes, ideas are going down. Just let me just unpack this here. A bog, an area of wet, m muddy ground. Okay. Okay. Uh, so a bog. Bog, a wide. So it, it's not necessarily going to be that. That's its definition. Interesting. Can't support a heavy body. So go copy and we'll go into here. And I'm going to go paste, take out the formatting. An area of wet, muddy ground that can't, that can't support a heavy body. Uh, we'll get rid of this and and watery moss, watery moss, watery moss. Uh, with um, with watery moss. Okay. Something like that. I don't know what else to put in here. Sump. Bog slang for. Liver tree? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Bog isn't. Yeah, now I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I know that slang. <laughs> English slang for bog. Soft wet ground or an area of this. Okay. All right. Definition. Um, usually acid area rich. Accumulated plants frequently surrounding a body. Okay, so interesting. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's pull the ideas that people had written in there because you guys had a couple of really great ideas. So I'm going to not put A there. I'm going to take everything else that you put in here, Charles, and that that can go and we can use this. The habitat tree. I like that idea. H habitat habitat H. And habitat tree, a large no, a large tree with a hollow trunk housing wild animals or plants. Yes, wonderful. Um, here we are. And then prepare, cook, and survive had a fairy ring, and we'll do that. That seems like a uh, a nice addition. F for fairy ring. Can can Fred actually find the right place to stick it? That's the question. Fairy. Alright, let's put that there. 
and uh, take out that fairy ring. Our circle of mushrooms was with, with a spiritual or magical connection. Uh, nice. Um, and that might actually be the definition of a fairy ring. If I, <laughs> I believe that there are fairy ring. Does it come up if I do a search on it? It does. A circular area of grass that is darker in colour, the surrounding grass due to the growth of certain fungus. Oh, they were popularly believed to have been used by fairies, um, by fairies dancing. Fungus. So fungus is a aspect of the fairy ring, which is why we've got mushrooms. Um, a circle of mushrooms or fungus. Fungus, 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 with a spiritual magical connection. There we go. Lice, nice, nice job there. Okay, a widow maker, a, a partly fallen tree being precariously held up by another tree, typically over a path. A widow maker. Couldn't. I guess rock formation will have to do. So I'm going to take your description of what that rock formation is and I'm going to put it under rock formation because I don't know what else to call it. Hedge. Good idea. Yeah, Widowmaker. I'm, I want to know what Widowmaker is. Is this a thing? Google is a friend. <laughs> Widow. Widowmaker. No, no. A dangerous machine or a piece of equipment. <laughs> A deadly branch caught precariously high in a tree, which may fall on a person below. Really? Okay. Um, right. Nice job, Charles. That was that's uh, that's help helpful. We will grab that one. The Widowmaker. And we're just going to pull it straight out of the chat. So W. Put it in the right place people as in me not you <laughs> uh, it'll be under I um, and we're gonna go here paste Widowmaker fallen tree precursely held up by another tree typically over a path okay nice and what else do we have here? Um, oh, rock formation. I need to pull your rock formation description, don't I? We had rock formation. This is the one I need to work with. Rock formation. And if I go back. Uh, hello, Derry. How are you doing, Derry? How's it going? Where's the um, the one you had? Table something, didn't you? Um, Oasis. No, 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 no. I've got to find it. Yeah, here we go. Copy that one, put that in, and we'll put it under rock formation. Mm. The two rocks help. Um, the two rocks are held up. Um, um, where two rocks? Okay, two rocks hold up a third, making a cave below. Perfect, rock formation. Um, that's that one filled. Nicely done. These are dangerous to lumberjacks. I bet they're dangerous to everybody. <laughs> dangerous to everybody. What have we got here? Oh, we've got the hedge. Got to do the hedge. Done the Widowmaker. Let's get Prepare, Cook and Survives hedge. There's a good point. Hedges are nice and easy. Hinge. Not hedge, hinge. Oh, oh this is a, a structure, isn't it? This is like a stone hinge. You want to put in a... I suppose we can do it. Fine. <laughs> Hinge. <laughs> that is the only um, man-made or creature-made structure I'm sticking in. I'll put the hinge in. <laughs> but that's the only one. I'm not putting any more in. Hinge. Let's stay with the, the wilderness stuff. We can come back to the other one. I mean, it'll be a, it'll be a hoot to do one hundred different 
um, man-made or um, manufactured um, structures. Hinge is a prehistoric circle oval enclosure. So this is what you've written down here. Yeah, it's an enclosure. So sweet, nice. Okay. Um, describing a glacier table. High desert is different than desert, which is different than steeps. Okay, which is different from scab lands, which is different than petrified forest. Now desert. That show prior forest. Okay, so so Derry, you've given me a lot to think about. So I have got to probably do some research, don't I? Uh, I'm already having to do some research. So let me just do this. Hi, desert. I'm not that familiar with um, desert locations and the difference between stuff. Uh, different from, what's this, steeps. We'll have to look this up. And then there's also, oh, what's this one? Scab lands. Is that scrub lands? Are you talking about scrub? Scrub lands? Scrub. Scrub lands. I think we have a petrified forest already. I, I honestly, I think we have petrified forest down. P. Petrified forest. There we go. A forest where the wood wood has been pe um, um, petrified, fossilized, or turned to stone. So we got the petrified forest. Okay. Dolmens said to be high places from dolmens. Dolmens. I recognize the word dolmen, but I don't know that much about it, um, Derry. Let me just put that one down there as well. Dolmen. Uh, I'll come back to that. A mirage. A mirage. Yeah, we'll leave we'll leave the mirage alone. Um, but I, I know we, I know what you're trying to do with that. Um, prepare, cook, and survive. Let me see if I dissected everything. Okay, all right, so I've got, I think, have, if I missed anybody, please let me know if I've missed somebody's stuff. I think I'm caught up. All right, there's a bit of work to be done here. Let's keep going. Uh, Brian Pull. I am sure Brian, I mean, I've heard of a Brian Pull, but I don't actually know that much about them. So what is a Brian Pull? What is a Brian Pull? Let, tell me. Brian Pull is a crater like depression on the sea floor filled with very concentrated concentrated brine from the lunar salt layer. Really? Oh. That is uh, interesting. You learn something new every day. Let's, uh, let's put it in. We wanted, we wanted to be able to describe what it is, now we, we know. A crater-like depression on the sea floor filled with very, um, uh, with, filled with concentrated brine. Uh, concentrated, with concentrated brine. Okay. Coming from the lunar salt layer. I am. Th does, is that a is that a, a specific part of a of the, a world? Methane gas that support um, supports a surrounding dense muscle bed. Okay. How much of this do we need to know? I think we've got enough. They've even got a little picture here. What's this picture show? Show us. Normal seawater. Oh, I see. And it gets. I feel like is is this there's something else going on here. There's something else going on here. But lots going on there. Got it though. It's down. Scablands. Okay, so Scablands is something for me to to look up. 
Salt flats, a location of land with um, a salt layer or crust of salt layer of crust. Salt lands, salt flats. Yeah, it's, it's, salt flats are not something that's familiar to where I live. But I don't think we have salt flats at all. Uh, let's take this. Let's put this hand, where is this? S, S, salt flats, S, S, salt. Sand dunes, salt. Rock formation. Paste. Salt flats. Okay, interesting. Let's, uh, let's look up salt flats. Define it. No, flats, Fred. <laughs> An area of flat land covered with a layer of salt. Okay. Okay. A location of land with a salt layer or or crust. Crust. Does anybody else, does anybody have anything to add to the salt flats that would be helped define it? What is it like? You know, is it um, is there a smell to them? Is there? Whoops, <laughs> that didn't work. Is there a smell to them? Is there like a? Um, yeah, I, 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 is there anything else we can add to that? Let me know. Kind of interested. Fifty minutes into the video. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to be taking a break, aren't I? The Dead Sea. Dolmen. Ah, oh, so that was what you were talking about, Dolmen. Salt flats. Most geographically entertaining thing I've ever seen all week. Well, Charles, um, that's 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 lovely. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking in terms of the sheer work involved in trying to come up with every type of wilderness um, location that you can think of and there are so many there is a lot it seems to me there's dolmen let's put dolmen here I should be taking a break but I want to, I want to look up dolmen now <laughs> uh, dolmen <clears throat> a megalithic tomb what with a flat stone laid on upright ones found chiefly in Britain and France Dolmen. The concept of the dolmen, a prehistoric monument of two or more upright stones supporting a horizontal slab, found especially in Britain and France, thought to be a tomb. Oh. It's not naturally forming, obviously. It's constructed. Am I right? A dolmen is a um, a structure that is man it's manufactured. Somebody's put it up. Or do these things? Because it looks to me like in North America there are some places that occasionally have something that naturally forms like this, probably from by accident. Found in Utah. Dry, windy, dry, windy, very bright from reflection of light. Thank you. Often, often uh, mined to this day, okay. All right, so dry, windy, bright, dry and windy. I can add dry and windy in. Um, so yes, we're, we're going to come back to Dolman. A location of land with a salt layer That is dry, windy, and and bright from light reflection. I imagine it must be unbearable if you are if you don't have sunglasses.
land with a salt layer that is dry. Windy and bright. And bright from light reflection. Cool. That's a better description of that. Wonderful. Glacier table. Um, Dolmens is not. Oh, the glacier. The, oh, so this is an actual thing. A glacier table. Let me just have a look. Glacier table. Um, well, let's take the, the megalith tomb. It's a dolmen. Well, it's a dolmen. A megalith tomb. It is a megalith tomb. Megalithic tomb. Um, dolmen. Megalithic tomb. Where are you? Rock formation. Tomb with two rocks held, holding up a third, making a cave below. And this is called a dolmen. My understanding is that a dolmen forming naturally without being man made does occur, but it's rare. Is that right? Or am I wrong about that? Let's put dolmen in the D's. Uh, dol. Dolmen. Uh, paste. Here we go. Got it. The glacier table. Uh, oh, I should take a break, but let's, see, let's grab this dol um, glacier table. Glacier. Define glacier table. What is a glacier? It is there is a, so there's a glacier and then there's a glacier table. Oh, okay, a glacier, a rock that extend and uh, resides on a pedestal of of ice, formed by different. Sheesh. Okay. So a pedestal of ice. What does this look like? Oh, oh, I see. This is this is naturally forming. These don't actually they are not man made, are they? Or um constructed. They they just happen. On top of a narrow um pedestal of ice. Interesting. Well, guess guess what? Pedest um uh, pedestal of ice um come with me. That's um glacier table. This should be under G, shouldn't it? G G G glacier. Uh, where the glacier is, we had glacier, and now we've got glacier table. Who would have um, expected that we were so many different, you know, uh, environmental, naturally forming structures and locations? Really interesting. But then I, I'm I'm kind of geeky that way. Glacier table, a large stone sitting precariously on top of a narrow pedestal of ice. Wow. Nice one, Shiner. That's uh, that's awesome. And thank you, Derry. You, you nailed down that rock formation. Now we've got it as a dolmen. Okay, so I definitely need to take a break. Um, as you can see, we are going to be, well, smashing our way through various things here. It looks to me at this present time that we, we may be heading into the 80 range in terms of the number of different things. I haven't filled out all of these things here, of course, but it looks to me like we're getting very close to, to 100. I am going to um, promote this giveaway one more time. Go take my break, come back, and, uh, and we're going to continue. Okay, so let's just see if I can find this link again. Uh, copy. and paste sweet that's it that's there and now i have a question for you how are we doing here sometimes sometimes oh it's changing okay hashtag this is my question to you hashtag um 
do you think that having a descript description of a location having a brief do you think that having a brief description of our location is helpful I know for me I find it really helpful because I, I, I honestly I would not have understood half these things you're talking about you said glacier table I'm thinking oh there's a table made of ice but it's not that it's something else um, so yes I'm going to ask you that question I'm going to go take a quick break and then I'm going to come back to work and uh, we're going to um, smash our way through a bit more of this it shouldn't hopefully take too long five minutes or less I won't be long Okay, let's get back to work. Okay, let's have a look at what people have to say. Um, I am also aware that I have not magnified my page, which is not helpful because you can't see very much. <laughs> so, so I will um, I will increase the, um, the magnification so you can actually read stuff off this thing. Okay, that's that. Let's swing on back. Here we go. There we go. So we've got a couple of things to work on. And there we are. So what do people have to say about my little question here? Um, Charles, uh, that was bugging you? Well, yeah, we now know. Prepare, cook and survive. Build site columns, lava that has contracted and formed pill pillars of volcanic rock. Really? Um, look up natural wonders of the world. Some are uh, rather spectacular. Natural wonders of the world. It's a good idea, Derry. I'm going to let you guys do that. I know you. some of you are, on, uh, are searching these things out yourselves. But let's put down prepare, cook and survive one. I'm kind of curious as to this one here. Uh, bell site columns. Bell site columns. Is it bell site column? Created by the cooling and contracting of lava. Okay. So what does it look like? Oh, it looks like this. Really? 
That is just nuts. Wow. Okay. Well, let's let's use that, eh? And you have described it really well, by the looks. Form, formed um, pillars of volcanic rock. Okay, so let's um, let's port that little sucker straight out of the uh, the chat. Let's grab that. Nice, nice job there. Bell, so I'm going to say under B. So it was down to the B. Bell, bell. Uh, there. Lava that has contracted and formed pillars of volcanic, volcanic rock. Wow. Nice. What else we got here, people? Maybe look up naturally. We've got that already. Um, yes. <laughs> it does help. So it does help to give you a descriptor. Because I would not understand how to describe to my players bell site columns until I had the rest of it. Do you know what I mean? And archipelago um, explaining what an archipelago is is all very well until you have something that actually describes it a bit more clearly um, an extensive chain of small islands and a lake um, what is the other one sea or ocean there we go. It's a bit more, a bit more information than that. So I'll, I'll do my. <laughs> um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give you at least a decent sentence that gives you enough information on each one, so that it makes it easier for you to actually communicate that information to your players. Okay. So when it's actually finished, it should be useful. <laughs> uh, okay. Good. I asked my brother about um, Dolman, and he's he's seen them as a result of an avalanche around. Oh, okay. Western. No, Western NC. I'm not sure where that is. But they're destroyed uh, pretty quickly because of how um, how dangerous they can be. Right. So in other words, they they artificially go and destroy them because they would potentially crush somebody. I get it. <laughs> yes so so even if you're labeling it what you when you label your your locations right when you label your locations you'll be it'll be bog and it might be the um um the foul smelling bog or the um the bog of um, eternal stench but then you have a descriptor to explain what it is uh, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of the Game Master books don't actually give you. They give you just what it is, and then you've got to go and look it up, which is not hugely helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the next one. We go, we're going to go with uh, Google's um, definitions are certainly more enlightening than me trying to guess. So let's do that. Let's keep going this way and see how we go. If you guys come up with some more, you let me know, and I will um, I'll jot them down, and we'll keep going. Um, Caldera, a large volcanic um, crater, especially one formed by by a major eruption, leading to the collapse of the mouth of the volcano. Okay, all right. So, okay, so this is there's a lot of information here. Let's let's take all of that, and I have to trim it down. That's just not going to work otherwise. So we'll go copy. I'm kind of curious as uh, about some of the other ones you've put forward. A large volcanic crater. Formed. By a major eruption. Um, 
um, that. Okay, a large volcanic crater formed by a major eruption with a collapsed with a collapsed mouth. I think that pretty much nailed that one down. Uh, now, right down here, Derry had this, this, the scab lands, and I kind of want to find out what scab lands is all about. Niagara Falls. Uh, do we have waterfall? I don't know if we put down waterfall um, Derry. Northern Carolina. Okay, thank you. The southern USA. Sorry, uh, my American-centric behavior <laughs> strikes again. No, no, it's all right. Niagara Falls is a wonder of the world, so accessible to people with weddings, yes. Waterfall is a probably not on our list. Did we actually put down waterfall? No, we did. A cliff face with water running from a, um, a source down the rocks into a pool. So we've got it. So I won't put down a Niagara Falls, but we've got we've got waterfall already. So we've got it on. Okay, let's go scab lands, because I don't know what that is really. Scablands. Um, a flat, elevated land deeply scarred by channels of glacier or f flow, flow glacial origin. Oh, well, that's too much to deal with. With poor soil, little vegetation, especially in Colombia. What does it look like? What? Yeah. A region characterized by elevated tracks of rocky land with little or no soil cover so, okay so now I need to see the picture I need to see what this looks like okay so is is that it or is this what we're talking about here channel scab lands eastern Washington very very specific scab lands scab lands okay all right, let's um, let's let's get that, and let's take this, and we will have to just downsize it so it's a bit clearer. Because right now there's a lot of information going on there, so. Um, so, paste, take out a region of, of elevated tracks of rocky land with a little soil. Dry, dry stream channels. Um, okay. That is too hard to conf that, that is hard too hard to actually um, get to grips with. A region of elevated tracks of rocky land with little or no soil cover is probably all we can do with a dry st stream channel. I think that's about the best we can do with. Uh, so we'll cover with a dry stream with with dry stream channels that about right that seems correct people um, a small floating island of vegetation really oh this is the moving oh oh okay all right I'm, I'm kind of yeah, you got me excited again I think we've got the the scab lands figured out scab Give me a scab, scabby, scab, scab, scab. Where are you going? You're going to go about here. Scab lands. Uh, all right. So that's... Is that sentence make sense to people? Is it clear enough what it is? Or have I got to describe it a different way? I am not too sure. You will let me know. Please let me know if that sentence I've just written up for scab lands is too hard to understand. 
I'm trying my very best to try to make things reasonably easy to understand. Um, so, sud. What's a sud? Never heard of a sud before. What's a sud? An area of floating vegetation in a stretch of the White Nile, thick enough to impose impede navigation. Okay, so now I'm interested. A floating vegetation meadow forms... So we don't need to worry so much about this. So let's just have a look. What does it look like? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, well, okay, now I get a better idea of what it is. I like it. So it's it almost feels like it's a floating. I almost feel like we need to put a floating island that moves, but um, it's probably not necessary. Um, Scablands make sense to me. A region. Region. Okay, so get rid of region. All right, so I'll get rid of region. Um, so an elevated tract of rock. An elevated track. Um, okay, so and not an elevated tracks of rock. Elevated tracks of ro um, rocky land with little or no soil cover with dry stream channels. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, and prepare, cook, and survive. We are going to take your little uh, idea here, and we're going to just copy it straight out of the chat, because that's so much easier. <laughs> Fred, Fred is going for the, the, uh, the, the, the quick and easy route, <laughs> if you hadn't figured it out. Oh, dear. All right. Come on. Paste this. Okay, a small floating island of vegetation. Now, can we put anything more in this to help? Soapy? Um, suds. No, no, it's not like that. It's not It's not soapy suds. It's a, it's a, we're dealing with something else there. <laughs> not soapy suds. Vegetation, so... Um, basically, it floats on water, doesn't it? It is essentially just floats in water. A small floating island of vegetation. And it looks to me... Um, where does it occur? These are... These are formed... Is it formed in a stream or a river? It looks like it's a stream or a river. Um, okay. A small floating island of vegetation that forms a river or stream. Correct. Made from reeds and uh, oh, it's made. Oh, it's made from reeds and weeds. That's my probably more important vegetation. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, Soapy. Hello, disgruntled, disgruntled Bob. How are you doing? So, uh, vegetation made from Soapy. Is it? Really? Soapy weeds and reeds. And reeds. Okay. Are we happy with that? Does that make make sense? Okay, cool. You'll let me know if that isn't, and I will change it if I have to. Uh, all right, how are we doing? Well, we're we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, steeps, 
I don't know what this is. I've no idea. What steeps? Copy it. Let's find out. Uh, this is this one. And steeps. Define it. What is it? A large area of flat, unforested, unforested grassland in southeastern Europe or Sib Siberia. Steep. Why are they called steeps? Steep, vast grassland devoid of trees with little diversity in vegetation uh, received around 25 to 30 centimetres, 10 to 12 inches of rain per year. The word steep is derived from Russian word for flat grassy plain. Oh, okay. The word's most extensive flat steeps are in the temperate, oh, okay, Eurasia. Is it Eurasia? Well, wow. okay. All right. Um, well, steeps it is. I feel I must clarify that the soapy weeds was a bit of a little ha ha on my part. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll 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 get rid of this. The, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Threw me for um, just a little bit there. Uh, let's 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 take out the word soapy. Okay. Made from reeds and weed, and reeds and weeds, reeds and weeds, reeds and weeds. Cut. Uh, there we go. Are we happy now? We've got it more accurate. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, right. So this is this one here. Um. Okay, so this is so copy this and we'll put it into here and see how that works. So it, it's another name for grasslands, essentially. A vast grassland devoid of trees with little diversity in vegetation. Okay, there we go, steeps. Well, if you wanted a different way of calling um, grasslands, there, there, there you go, you've got one. Um, steeps, steeps, steeps. Swamp. No, let's put it at the end. Put it right there. Paste it, steeps. Okay, cool. Only needs water and light. Soap wart. <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's all right. Um, usually I get distracted far more than this. It doesn't require land. Soap wart only needs water and light. Only needs water and light. Soap wart. What is soap wart? You've thrown a few curly ones at me today, um, Deary. Soap wart. I don't know what that is. Okay. A European plant of of the pink family with a fragrant fragrant pink pink, fragrant pink or white flower and le and leaves that were formerly used to make soap. Oh <laughs> alright, okay. Uh, I see. I see where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, a little, little, little bit like that. Okay, let's go back to um, the task at hand, which is to fill in the rest of this. <laughs> we, um, this one here, I, high desert. Let's do high desert. Uh, copy. What is high desert? Huh. 
Deary, are you telling me, by the way, are you daring, telling me that soap water is found in a sud? That floating vegetation? Is that what you're saying to me? I, I wasn't too sure. Anyway, I'm sure you'll let me know if that's the case. So what is this? High desert. High desert. High desert, sometimes formerly known as, as the desert, is a vernacular region with with non-discrete boundaries applied to areas of the western okay um can we do this i think this would be too complicated to include high desert is a region that's generally situated oh okay just north of our, our so it's a desert region that is above a certain um elevation okay all right. That's why it's called high desert. The high desert is, is an unofficial and vaguely defined geographic area of Southern California located in the northeast of... Um, so that's... Okay. Walling upland with poorly developed stream drainage. Um, how do I how do I construct this? Um, <clears throat> uh, ch -ch -ch. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it. I, I kind of partly know what to do with it, and, and the rest of it I don't. I'm not honestly too sure. Um, an area that is generally situated between. Uh, yeah, put a, put a question mark on there. I don't know what to do with it. As a plant in the suds. Ah, oh, okay, soap wort. So that's what, soap wort, soap wort. Okay. So, so important. It's made of sanctuary. Weeds. And um, so port. Uh, Okay. All right, so that's that's got us most of what we need. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's take this one. I am kind of curious as to what this is. Uh, copy. I have to think a bit more about high desert, how to structure that, so it's actually going to be useful. Because right now, I don't think I, um, the definition and what I had in mind it would be very useful to people. An unpleasant or unhealthy smell or vapor? No. It's like, how do we distinguish it? Is it just basically desert, which is at a higher elevation? High desert. Um, actually, that's probably it. Isn't it? A desert region at high elevations of two thousand to four thousand feet above sea level. Does that seem about right, people? I think that is. What does Charles put down? Um, Concretions. Field of beach filled with large, perfectly round stones. Oh, really? Cold, unlike normal hot deserts. Oh. Oh, oh okay. Okay, that, that helps. Thank you. A cold desert region. Desert region at high elevations. Okay, I've got it. 
I got it. All right, now now we're, now we're cooking. Um, this other thing, I have no idea what this means. It's a disease? No, that's going to confuse me. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not sure what that is. So we'll do that. Do that. Okay. But high desert I can put in. And we'll go back to the chat because somebody's got, a, got another good idea. Cut. High desert. A cold desert. I would not have imagined that there could be such a thing. Um, but it, apparently there is. You can have a cold desert and you can have a hot desert. Much to my surprise. Okay. Sweet. Right, now what did put Charles put down? There we go. There it is. Oh, there's no soap wort. I had I had assumed that soap wort was a plant that was <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys are getting me too too many times here. Um I'm gonna be all over the place otherwise. It's gonna take a lot longer. <laughs> oh dear. All right, copy. So I don't know what that is. I'm gonna put it in and then I'm gonna look it up. Because I'm going to have to at this point. <laughs> There's so much stuff that I don't know about. Uh, paste. Okay. A field or beach filled with large, perfectly round stones. Okay. Really good description. So let us find out what it actually is. Is This, this is probably the actual description if I look it up, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll go into do it, do it, look in Google and it'll, that's exactly what it'll say. <laughs> I want to see what it looks like too. I'm a, I I have that, I'm pretty sure we have them in New Zealand. They're not very common. So, concretion. Is that how it's pronounced? Concretion. Concretion. Um, a large solid mass formed by the local accumulation of matter, especially within the body or within a mass or, or sediment. No, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, so let's... Uh, a process in which matter... No. Okay. And geography... Uh, geog uh, okay, okay. Mass of, of mineral matter embedded within rocky layers, including limestone, sandstone, and shell. I am lo a little lost here. Uh, all right, okay. Fields, beaches are where they can be. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Look at the image. Okay. Let's do the, let's look at the image. Oh, uh, now I, oh, uh, these are quite large. These aren't small stones. So for it to be this, does that, do the stones, they're not little itty bitty pebbles. They're quite large stones. Is that what you're saying, Charles? Confounding concretions. They're actually quite large stones. Medium to large, I would say, in size. Correct? Interesting. A field a field or beach filled with large, perfectly round stones. That's exactly what you said. It's really interesting as a location, isn't it? Wow. Bingo. You got it. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Great. Awesome. That, um... It nailed another one down. Let's go to the very end. Um, blackthorn. Is there a, a blackthorn? Is that an area? Or is that just a plant? Blackthorn. Define. Okay. So blackthorn looks like it's a plant. Okay. So we can... Right. So this is... this is yeah, So we'll, we'll eliminate this. So a lot of the uh, things that I was unsure about have been worked through wetland let's do wetland start at the, 
the back, I guess. Wetland. What is what is a wetland? Land consists of marsh or swamp saturated, saturated, sit, satu, saturated, saturated. Good lord. Um, okay. Flood results. Um, oxygen free. All right. So. We need, we need something that is, okay, is a distinct ecosystem that is flooded or saturated by water, either permanently or seasonally. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, so that is probably the easiest way. So New Zealand has a lot of wetlands, by the way. Um, So we go copy, get rid of this, land consisting of marshes or swamps, swamps, okay, land consisting of marshes or swamps that is saturated Uh, and what did it say? It said here, permanently or seasonally. Um, we don't really need, do we need to have that? It doesn't actually need to be there. It's actually unimportant to have that there, isn't it? Saturated land. Okay, all right, good. Sweet, right, next. Uh, well, we know what a volcano is, but let's get a, a reasonable definition. Volcano. Volcano. Um, so... Uh, so this is, this is going to have to be shortened. You guys know what a volcano is. I, I know you do. I just need to describe it, don't I? A mountain or hill typically, con uh, uh, having a crater or vent through which lava, rock fragments, hot vapor and gas are, um, gas. Guess, 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 erupt. No, go with that one, thank you. Erupt. That's all we need. There we go. Lovely. Sweet volcano. Done. Uh, let's see. How many do we have here? Out of all the things we, we've got, we have 84, which means we still need about, what is it, 16 more, isn't it? 16 more to get to 100, and I just got to fill in the gaps for these ones. Uh, underwater plateau. Copy, and let's go here. Uh, right, paste. Let's go here, and what we've got here. What is an underwater plateau? It's a large, relatively flat, um, a large, relatively flat elevation that is higher than the surrounding relief, with one or more steep slum sides. Oh, so this is a oceanic plateau or s submerged um, plateau is like 
flat elevation that is higher than the surrounding reef relief for one of more steep sides uh, okay so l l get me an image so I can have a bit more to understand here it's not division plateau um, maybe we rename it and well no it says underwater what is an underwater plateau oceanic plateau is also called submerged plateau large submerged elevation raised ra rising sharply at least 660 feet above the surrounding deep sea floor characterized by principally by extensive wow okay there's a lot going on there the great Bar barrier reef uh yes I've got Oasis um, Dungeons and Chronics. We've got Oasis for sure. Well, what's this dairy? What have you got here? Estuaries, where is seawater? Mixes with fresh water, uh, brackish water. I'm pretty sure we have that already. And I'm pretty sure we... F I don't know if I've filled in estuaries, but I, I know that it's, it's on the list. Great Barrier Reef. We've got the reef. We've actually got Coral Reef and we've got Reef. So we, I think we've distinguished the two. I don't know if that's necessary. Okay. Um, a large submerged elevation. Submar submarine. Submarine. Okay. Uh, this is a bit more difficult. Let's do this. And go here. A large um, We'll come back to this. A large underwater A large flat um, underwater elevation rising sharply. Um, above the surrounding deep sea floor. That's pretty clear. I think that's got that one down. But do we want underwater plateau or do we want oceanic plateau? I think underwater plateau is probably going to be the easiest one to deal with. Uh, now, I'm not sure if we're um, sticking to the real um, places, natural phenomena. I'm, I, I, I am and am, am not. Um, I just want to focus down on I really want to focus down on um, uh, wilderness locations. Floating clouds, mythical location going into the... We'll just stick that in. We'll stick it in. What else here? I, I, I guess what you're, you're saying is, can we have floating islands? You know, you, that's what you're saying, right? Um, we're sticking to places natural phenomena or not, but the uh, what the whale falls are pretty um rad. Uh, thing is not normally what thing is they don't normally happen on land, but a fantasy setting with huge creatures. Well, so we're not dealing with the creatures so much. We're dealing with the the landscape as such. I'm going to have to wrap it up in a second, people, because I'm running out of time. But let me get down your um giant beanstalk. Fair enough. I think I think we might have to start heading in that direction, uh, people. Uh, we will take this. I'm going to just do a quick copy and paste. Chuck it in. Come back to it. We'll deal with it some other day. 
and um, positioning will have to be later because I don't have time. And then somebody else had put in something else. Um, floating, floating clouds. Let's do that. Do something like this. What was the other one that people had put down? Stargate. Nah, forget about the Stargate for now, people. Stargate. We'll, we'll do. We'll, we'll include Stargate when we do everything. All the, I guess, all of the structures that you would put on the wilderness, because that will be its own thing. Um, so floating, floating clouds. Did you want to have? Is it? What's a floating? What's a floating um, um, piece of land? Floating land. What is that? A floating mass of earth and partly decayed vegetation held together by interlacing roots. No, so it's a floating island. That's not the same thing. Um, all right, so what I'll do here, floating land, floating island, okay, I've got that down, dry stream bed in a steep sided valley, okay, all right. Let's do that one. Let's put that one in there. Okay, this is the one. We'll check on that later. Uh, that'll do for now. Thank you, Charles. And um, right, okay. That's all we have time for today. So we did pretty well, you know. Everything got lined up. Um, there's still obviously a shite load of work to be done to get it all um, together and finished. But uh, fortunately I'm not going anywhere. Otakri, Whitestone, New Zealand. Tar pits. Tar pits are a good idea. Yes, we should definitely include tar pits. Let's put tar pit in there before I, I run away. I was, I was about to go. I was almost on my, on my bike. Almost on my bike. Didn't quite get away though. Here we go. Let's put this in. Tar pit. I I really like the idea of the tar pits. That's a that's a great. Why we didn't think of it before, I have no idea. Okay, so definitely we we we're, we're looking pretty good. Abyss. Did I have abyss down? I probably didn't have abyss. You guys, are, you're not letting me go until we get, what, what is this? Is this the, we must get it all done. We need to at least name everything. We need to get the hundreds down. I know this is, everybody's just firing away. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to step away. Um, you guys are doing great, I have to say. And the fact that you've tolerated me trying to figure out all this stuff. Actually, it's much harder than I thought to actually describe these things in abyss. Uh, abyss. I'll just put a question mark by it and finish it off later. There we go. Yeah, so close. We are so close. But let's let's get real. For it to be a, a, a proper tool, I've still got huge gaps that need to be filled in, right? It's going to take a little bit of time to get it done. But it looks to me like we've got eight or nine more to do and, and it's mostly done. I don't know what to do about the cutback bank or the roof the river cliff but um but uh, we'll see how we go in the future so we did really well i have to say nice job nice job and um <laughs> the next time we do this is probably going to be about oh, what is it roughly what yeah something like two months from now and then we'll continue on our way um Grand Prismic Park. 
Prismatic Park, Grand Prismatic Park in the USA. I don't know what that is. I'm not, I have no idea. I've got no idea. Anyway, let's let's wrap it up. I have to go to work, people. I have to go to work. Uh, tomorrow, we're coming back and we're doing Monster Motivations. You guys, we started doing a monster table of Monster Motivations. So I'm going to present what we have created so far tomorrow. I think that's the plan, is I'm going to present the Monster Motivations we, we came up with. And we're going to keep building on them and trying to expand them out as much as we possibly can. Uh, and then the following week, when it comes to Monster Law, we'll be talking about the Hydra, which is actually very basic. It's very simple because the Hydra, there's not much to a Hydra. It's, it's pretty it's pretty basic. Anyway, uh, a huge thank you to everybody uh, in the chat. You really have been wonderful today. It has been a lot of fun. I've learned so much. So thank you to my patrons who support me on Patreon. Uh, thank you to everybody who took part in the poll today. I really do appreciate that you did. Uh, if you have shared your ideas and they've been put down, it's because you had some great ideas. It made me think a lot. I had to really sort of dissect things. Uh, if you were just watching, thank you for being here. And if you're just re-watching, also thank you. Okay, I know it's a live stream and it's long. Um, but anyway, you will find this will eventually wind up on Patreon when we're finished, <laughs> along with everything else that we make. But uh, the original program that I presented at the very beginning is already on Patreon. It's already up there for download. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.